I think it's fair to say that most people when they think of physics picture this abstract subject that only incorporates mathematics in a way that just makes it hopelessly impossible for any normal person to understand. This preconceived notion that physics is this mystical topic that only the Albert Einsteins of the world can understand keeps a lot of people from trying to learn about the topic, let alone trying to get a degree in it. The goal of this video is to convince you that anybody can study and succeed in physics. You see, the first step is acknowledging the type of person it does take to get beyond that surface level understanding of physics. In reality, the only three things you really need in order to succeed in this field is be honest with yourself, be curious, and be a little competitive. Now the curiosity aspect kind of is self-explanatory, but the reason I say you need to be honest with yourself is because studying physics is not like opening a textbook and reading it as if it was a novel. You need to work through the exercises and examples religiously through each section. And if you get a problem wrong, don't assume you'll get it right next time. You got the answer wrong for a reason, and it's time to acknowledge that you didn't get the answer right because you didn't understand how to solve the problem. This is also why you should never follow along with the examples in the book. You end up tricking yourself into thinking that because you could follow what they did, that that means that you would have done the same thing. The fact of the matter is, is that you don't learn physics by working through a problem and getting it right. You learn physics by seeing how many ways there are to do a problem wrong. This is an opportunity that you would have skipped out on if you would have just read right through the example because they don't show you, by the way, don't do it this way because it yields the wrong result. The examples are there to serve as a reference if you've gone through the motions of struggling and beating your head against the wall and you still can't figure it out. Then you're free to look at just as much as you need to get to the next step. Struggling through the examples, knowing that the solution is right there is also where the competitive edge comes in. So yeah, it's easy to peek at the solution if you wanted to, but as soon as you look, you lost. That's you inadvertently saying, I couldn't figure this out by myself. I like to think of this as kind of a competition between me and the author or me and the professor, and the professor essentially saying, I knew you couldn't figure it out. Several of the people at my university that are at the, roughly the same level as I am as far as the classes that we have taken have adopted the perspective that if we're given enough time to solve a problem, we can figure it out. But this came with due time. See, this didn't start out with me taking university physics and knowing that I could solve every single problem ever. That's not how it went for me. This confidence built up over time, and this will happen for you as well. So if you're taking university physics right now, and you have no idea what you're doing or what's going on, but you're determined to keep going forward, it will get better, and you will get more confident. Another thing that really resonated with me when I first started pursuing my degree is when someone told me, if something doesn't make sense, one of your assumptions is wrong. Now this seems like a statement that has its exceptions, like if someone said, 2 plus 2 is 5, you might be saying that doesn't make sense no matter what way you look at it. There's no false assumption in what I have whatsoever. But your false assumption would be that this person is going to give you a sensible answer. So no matter what the problem is, if it doesn't make sense to you, one of your assumptions is wrong. The point is, when something goes wrong, always assume you're the one that did it. After all, if you're doing a problem set, what's more likely? that the professor made a mistake, or you, who's just now learning the material, made a mistake. Now yes, there are several times where the professor might get their words mixed up, or there could be a typo in the book that you're using, but those are special cases. And we don't live our day-to-day -day life by the special cases in the first place, so why don't we start with this? Okay, now on to working habits. So when it comes to what I like to do with my day-to-day -day studies, my methodology is to make all of my mistakes on the whiteboard, and then transcribing the complete polished off result onto paper. I also keep separate notebooks for each topic that I'm learning about in the semester. So for example, next semester I'll have a notebook for quantum mechanics, I'll have a notebook for computational physics, I'll have a notebook for public speaking. I just never want to have to worry about where I put notes on that specific topic. If you know that the material is in a notebook, You'll dig through the notebook until you find it, but if there's a question in your mind on whether it was in your calc notebook, your astrophysics notebook, or whatever, you'll be less inclined to put the effort in to dig through every single one of them. Now the last thing I want to talk about is the student-teacher relationship. There is no one-to-one -one correspondence to how much effort the professor makes and how well you do in the course. 
You see, we have a tendency to right away label a professor as a bad teacher if the way they explain things doesn't resonate with us right away. This is where you really need to take your education into your own hands. If you can't understand the professor because of their accent, sit closer to class. Now there's also something called the expert paradox, which is where a professor has such a wealth of knowledge on the topic you're learning about to where even the most complicated section seems completely trivial to them. And there might even be a case where you ask for clarification and your professor kind of dismisses you saying, oh, well it's obvious that in the case where there's no density, Poisson's equation reduces to Laplace's equation and just sends you on your way. But I promise you, if you and your classmates continuously ask questions on those topics that he seems trivial, he will take it down to a level that you understand. After all, the professor gets absolutely nothing out of seeing his class fail. And that advice applies to any class, not just physics. So this is just what seems to work for me. I need to be honest with myself and almost a little harsh. I hope you found my perspective on how to study efficiently as a physics student helpful. If you can think of any other ways that help get you through your classes, comment down and let other people know. But I think that'll do it for this video. Good luck, guys.